Hey guys, Pygad Rules here, and if you saw my SpongeBob Season 9 videos, you're probably wondering one thing. Why didn't I review the episode Nice Try? I mean, look, I even said it myself in a live stream. When asked what my favorite episode from Season 9 was, I claimed that it was Nice Try. So why would I skip it in the Season 9 review if I like it so much? Well, it's because it's not really a Season 9 episode anymore, and it is in fact only a lost episode now. I only saw the episode once at a Nickelodeon critic convention. I assumed that they would be airing it again, and I assumed it would be a part of season 9, but unfortunately, there was only one copy of the episode, and someone at Nickelodeon managed to have an issue with the VCR player and got the tape all tangled up. There is no existing footage of this episode left. So, much like Squidward's suicide and that one scene in I Was a Teenage Gary where Squidward horrifically turns into a snail, this episode will only ever exist as a myth. And as one of the lucky few who have actually seen it, I think it is my job to describe the episode to you so that you can understand why I think it was so great and the tragedy that was losing this episode. So, Nice Try is unique in that despite being one 11 minute episode, it actually features eight different mini plankton plans. One for each hour of the workday, from nine to five. And to make each plan feel unique, Plankton manipulates a different character for each one of them. So, we start off at the chum bucket with Karen once again chastising Plankton for being so focused on the formula and yet never being able to get his hands on it. She claims that he never will. Plankton doesn't take this lying down and swears that tomorrow is going to be the big day. That he will do whatever it takes that this time it is happening. We then get a time card. 9 a.m. the next day. We see Bubble Bass walking into the Krusty Krab, his belly sloshing around. He goes up to the counter and we see that Plankton is hiding in his mouth under his tongue. Plankton tells the audience that he's gonna jump out of Bubble Bass's mouth right as he's about to eat a Krabby Patty and run right out the door with it. Bubble Bass starts ordering some ridiculously complicated sandwich. I want a Krabby Patty with olives, pickles, onions, seahorse radish, chocolate sauce, bananas, mushrooms. You get the idea. As he's talking, he spits on Squidward and Plankton finds it hard to stay in his mouth until he flies out onto Squidward's nose. This prompts Squidward to say, nice try, Plankton as he flicks him off back to the chum bucket. Cut to the next time card, 10 a.m. We see SpongeBob's parents walk into the Krusty Krab, followed by Plankton in a tiny sailor suit. His father says, now SpongeBob, get out here on the double, young man. SpongeBob excitedly rushes out to see his parents, only to find them giving him the disappointed parent stare, a stare so powerful that it literally melts him. As SpongeBob pops back to his usual form, his mom tells him that this kind little boy in the sailor suit told them that SpongeBob has been bullying him and took his prized possession, the secret Krabby Patty formula. SpongeBob stammers. He doesn't know what to say until Krabs comes out of the back office. Ah, Mr. and Mrs. Squarepants. What seems to be the trouble? Our boy appears to have stolen from this nice little child. Krabs says, ah, yes, I'm a parent myself. I know what trouble little ones can be. Krabs pulls out a photo album, which contains pictures of the Krabby Patty formula bottle dressed in baby clothes in a crib and other pictures of the formula growing up. SpongeBob's parents look angrily at Plankton and tell SpongeBob that they're sorry for bothering him at work. After they leave, Krabs and SpongeBob say, Nice try, Plankton. 11 o'clock a.m. Plankton and Squilliam stand outside the Krusty Krab. Plankton says, Now just go in there and tell Squidward that you know many important industry secrets. Squilliam says, And what's in it for me? Plankton says, Well, you'll humiliate Squidward and up, up, up. Squilliam cuts him off. Say no more. Plankton says to the audience that with Squilliam flaunting how many secrets he knows, it'll taunt Squidward into revealing the Krabby Patty formula. Squilliam goes to the register. Well, hello, Squiddy. I see you're still working in this dump. Squidward says, I'll have you know I'm working here as a performance piece. Squilliam says, Oh, really? Well, your acting is magnificent. Anyway, I just came by to rub in that I know many industry secrets because I'm so rich and wealthy and have such a powerful unibrow. Squidward says, Oh, yeah? Well, I have access to one of the most beloved foods in Bikini Bottom. Squilliam leans in real close and says, Is it the Krabby Patty? A burger recipe? Squidward just says, Uh... Well, actually... And then Squilliam just laughs and walks out of the store. Plankton asks if he got the formula, and Squilliam continues to laugh, saying that he got what he wanted, and he wouldn't sink low enough to even want to know the formula behind a fast food burger. And then he says, Nice try, Plankton. 12 o'clock. PM. We see Plankton setting up a stunt show for Larry, which includes all sorts of cannons and flaming hoops. He tells Larry to give him a crazy show. Larry says thanks, and by the way, 
awesome voice, dude. The show starts and a crowd forms, which includes Krabs, Spongebob, and Squidward. As Plankton wades through the crowd to get to the Krusty Krab, he finds Krabs standing right in front of the door. Krabs points up to the sky and Plankton looks to see that Larry's in an airplane and has written, Nice Try Plankton in smoke. While he's looking, Krabs picks him up and then he flicks him back to the chum bucket. One o'clock. PM. Plankton is around back of the Krusty Krab, standing with Patrick. He tells Patrick that the Paddy Vault is right through here, and if Patrick chews through the walls, he'll have access to unlimited patties. But Plankton tells the audience that Patrick should be chewing right into the back wall safe. Patrick starts chewing through the back of the wall, but just ends up in the back kitchen with Spongebob, where the two start chatting and Patrick completely forgets the reason he was there. Until Plankton runs in and starts yelling at him. At which point Spongebob and Patrick both say, Nice try, Plankton. Do note that every single time a character says nice try, it gets progressively more sarcastic and snarky and ridiculous. Two o'clock. PM. Plankton busts through the doors of the Krusty Krab, holding Gary over his head with one hand and a salt shaker in the other. He says, nobody move or the snail gets it. I'm not messing around anymore. Give me the Krabby Patty formula. SpongeBob sadly nods to Krabs, who says, all right, Plankton, just don't hurt anyone, and tries to hand Plankton the formula. Unfortunately, Plankton doesn't have a free hand, so he has to put Gary down. Krabs pulls the formula away and Gary promptly chews up Plankton, spitting him out and going, Meow, 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 meow. Three o'clock p.m. Sandy runs into the Krusty Krab saying that she's gotten a letter from her rich oil tycoon uncle who claims he wants to open a Krusty Krab on the surface in Texas. But to do so, he'll need rights to use the Krabby Patty formula. Krabs isn't sure about this until Sandy points out just how rich an oil tycoon really is. We see Plankton outside staring in the doors, telling the audience that Krabs will actually be mailing the rights right over to Plankton when he is suddenly stepped on by Sandy's actual uncle who just so happened to be randomly paying a visit. Sandy's happy to see him, but he claims that he knows nothing of this letter, and that even though he doesn't know the Krabby Patty secret formula, he wouldn't dare sell a burger that wasn't 100% pure grade A Texas beef. SpongeBob says, if you didn't send the letter, then who did? Camera pans over to Plankton walking into the Krusty Krab. Everyone, including Sandy, Sandy's uncle, SpongeBob, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, and all of the Krusty Krab customers very snarkily yell at Plankton, nice try, Plankton. Plankton. Plankton is fuming and claims that he has one last plot that is completely foolproof. Four o'clock p.m. One hour before closing. We cut to Squidward staring off into the distance, uninterested in his work. We hear the front doors open, and Squidward's expression changes to perplexed. We hear Plankton say, one Krabby Patty, please, before Squidward bursts into laughter and yells for Krabs and SpongeBob to get out here because they're going to want to see this. The two arrive, and then the camera shows that Plankton is disguised as Bubble Buddy. Everyone in the Krusty Krab starts laughing at Plankton. Plankton is furious. Krabs takes a breath to say something, and Plankton says, yeah, yeah, nice try, Plankton. Krabs says, nah, this one was just lame, not even a nice try. SpongeBob says, pretty transparent if you ask me. The whole Krusty Krab erupts into laughter again, and Plankton screams no, as we cut to an overhead shot of the Krusty Krab, and the episode ends. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was nice try. It was an episode that featured eight different plots, used a number of recurring characters on the show, had a bizarrely funny running gag, and never contained a dull moment. Okay, okay, so the reality is that this is not a lost episode. This is not a real episode. No such episode called Nice Try exists, at least as of right now anyway. The name Nice Try was a recurring joke from my live streams over on my Pie Guy Plays channel, and I decided to run with it and come up with an episode that I would think would be one of the greatest episodes of SpongeBob. And I'd also been kicking around this idea for a while of a SpongeBob episode that was basically a compilation of a bunch of different stories. And when thinking of an idea for Nice Try, I remembered Spongebob's line to Plankton in Copy Bob Ditto Pants, Nice Try Plankton, which led me to tie the title to Plankton Plots and then tie that back into my idea of a compilation type episode. I tried to include a lot of recurring characters, but not make it too fanservice-y. Honestly, I think the biggest challenge with this one would be fitting it all into 11 minutes. It might need a little bit trimmed here or there to do it, but I think it should still be possible. It's also a very ambitious episode Episode, which of course leaves a lot of room for things to go wrong. But I think if hypothetically this episode were to be made in the way that I'm imagining it in my head, it would be a really dang good episode. But that's just my opinion. And I'd really love to hear what you guys think about this episode idea. With that, Pie Guy Rules, out.